G'day folks. Well, it's a good Friday afternoon. Haha. <laughs> um, I figured I'll get the main door open again, move some UPS units in, turn that around so that it's out of the way, and uh, also put some new tyres on the Ford. I've already mount cleaned the wheels up and mounted them. Uh, I did that earlier this morning, so they're all ready to go on. i just got to move some cars and bikes and things around and try and get the damn thing into a place that I can work on it. <laughs> bit hard with the bike behind it at the moment so I'm gonna move all that. Uh, yeah. They're the old ones that I stripped off. The previous owner definitely got his money's worth out of them. Still worn pretty evenly though. Um, yeah picked these up from the junkyard while I was at it. These came out of one of their earlier facilities. They're only about a year or so out of date but still fully charged if not ever so slightly to the overcharge side. That's carbon dioxide. I've got to weigh that one and work out what it has in it. It should have a net weight and a uh, gross filled weight. It'll be stamped on it somewhere. In there. Yeah. Tear weight 4.62 kilos. So I'll put him on the scales and see what's going on. It's full of spider eggs. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, those white things are spider egg sacks. So yeah, that one's also dry chem. You just gotta sort of tap them on their side, tap them upside down and just get the dry chem moving again after a couple of years. You don't generally have to refill them, but yeah, that was first tested 03, but the last test was 2011. So it's about a year old. Just needs to be shaken up a bit. Yeah, not bad. It's an old one. It's seen a lot of use. Or at least it's been around a bit. <laughs> Anywho. Got my new treads on. Beautiful. I'm just going to move this thing again. I think. Yeah, that other side's gone down again. This is the only good tyre on it now. Yeah slow leak in both of the front ones and something metallic in one of the other back ones not to mention it was actually these cars tend to try and wear out the inside shoulder so one of the back tires was actually about to split around between the tread and the sidewall so kind of dangerous the spare in the back was almost dead because it had actually started to split there's a big separation line about 10 inches long around the uh, join between the sidewall and the tread so very dangerous, never let them get that worn out that they start to pop, otherwise you end up in an accident. So yeah, gonna move a sheet lifter, like a drywall panel lifter, and that, which is Dad's little Honda H100 project, complete with drain pipe air intake. <laughs> Mind you, that engine's more powerful than the frame can take. That frame is not built well enough and the wheels aren't big enough to take the power that engine's putting out now. Believe it or not. A bit of a cracked casing and everything. It spat the chain back into it and shattered the casing, but he's been keeping that thing going. Although I can see some gaps in the, the sicker flex. Oh well. And keep them working. Well, I suppose this is the easiest way to do this. I'm going to put all new brakes on it and everything like that. The brake hoses don't seem to be bulging or breaking down in any particular way, so they're good. That's all good. Um, this wheel was not even bolted on tight. Like I just spun, spun the nuts off by hand. I didn't even have to use the lug nut wrench. Kind of troubling, but hasn't ruined anything. Yeah. Pad's okay, but I'll do all of that. Do all new rotors, get the calipers recode. Might even get some new hoses for the fun of it. We'll do the lot. No rust or nothing in there. Pretty good car. Okay, well we're done with the Ford. She's got some new rubber tyres on the front. Looking pretty good. Uh, I'll test drive it tomorrow. Uh, take it down to the tyre shop on Monday, get it 
get everything balanced. I fitted them all myself, so I'm going to get them balanced. I don't own a balancer yet. Uh, eventually, I'll find a balancer to go with my tire fitting machine, which is currently installed at the uh, scrapyard, uh, simply because they have three phase power and they also get quite a few tires on alloy wheels and stuff to strip down, so it sort of helps us both out. I use their three phase power whenever I want. I strip down tires whenever I want with their compressor and three phase power and they can use it whenever they want to strip down scrap tires so that's why I don't have it here. I know people, a few people have asked me if I had a, have a tire machine and I do but it's just not here. It's not installed at this property so yeah that's why you generally don't see it but yeah got the Ford done, got the door shut haven't moved the Yanma yet uh, my UPS population seems to be multiplying uh, hopefully it'll stop now <laughs> Uh, but then again, you can never have too many UPS, especially when they're free. And almost charged. Apparently these are pretty good, they're a pure sine wave. I've got three, four of those, I think. Yeah. They've been sitting for quite a few years, but they still hold charge. Or well, some of them do anyway. That one's dead. Yeah, battery. They're the battery packs for two of them. There's three of these, but two external backup or additional batteries, which will probably have to be stripped out and refitted with brand new batteries. Uh, unfortunately, the five pin plug in cables are missing. That's the worst part. They've got a five pin jumper cable that goes to the UPS, so I've got to figure out what pin is what and make my own cable. Just like these APCs, which, un which fortunately have a fixed cable on the battery packs, but those ones are missing. So that's not too bad. And there's a couple of uh, UPS Pro 280s, which are just like a smaller domestic model thing. Uh, tiny little baby thing up there. Uh, there's an earlier Powerware 5115. And a Landsaver UPS 1000 Upsonic. It's also very dead. Hmm, beeped. It beeps, that's about it. So <laughs> there's some charge left in it. Also a neat little exit sign. I'm gonna stick that up on the wall there next to the door. <laughs> right where an exit sign belongs. Okay, I just thought I'd have a look at this uh, exit sign before I uh, change on to another subject. Uh, obviously it's gotta have a battery backup in it, which is what this, this is all about. The batteries are dead, and I've just disconnected them. But it's got a standard fluorescent lamp ballast in it. Step down transformer for the charging for the batteries. Probably about 6 volts or something. Um, normal fluoro lamp starter and everything for the lamps. Which are just, I don't know, 13 watts or something. No, 8 watts. Uh, not an awful lot else in it. If worst comes to worst, I can substitute it for one of these, which are solid state ballast, designed for four tubes. They came out of the uh, AHT drink fridges that I scrapped a while ago. I've got two of these sets, which have four tubes and a solid state ballast, so I can uh, modify and change all this stuff out if I have to. The tubes are identical anyway, so I've got spare tubes there. But I want to make this thing work just when the garage and everything's online. I don't want it to come on as soon as I shut everything down. And that's the problem, as soon as I turn everything off, things like a UPS or this is going to go into battery backup mode and just consume itself overnight. So I've got to work out a permanent power circuit for computers and UPS and a temporary power, cir power circuit for while I'm out here working. Because I like to shut everything down once I'm done. Nothing's left running. 
So a few changes are going to happen with the circuitry around here. I'm going to get an electrician in to do a bit of work. Uh, I know a couple of good electricians who'll do stuff for mates rates. But yeah, I'm going to finish cleaning this thing up and just rig it up so that it works purely on 240 volts. Disconnect all the backup system on it because I don't really trust that cooked old battery pack. And uh, yeah, away we go. Thanks for watching. Well, I figured it's worth a shot. Connected the uh, main AC fluoro up to the mains. The rest of this is designed to run on backup. That's why this tube has seen very little, if any, use. So, yeah. But just because it's old doesn't mean it's not good. There we go. Working. Just goes to show, just because you're made of new parts, spare parts, or old parts, you can shine no matter what you're made of. Someone tell me what movie that one's from. If you're watching this channel, I bet you a lot of you have seen it. it stars Robin Williamson. Very awesome uh, animated movie. Very awesome. Thanks for watching.